Uh, every week we keep the Sabbath day. And the Sabbath day is not just about keeping commandments. Uh, Jesus said in Mark chapter 2 that the Sabbath uh, was made for men. And therefore the Sabbath was a, made for men to enjoy. It was meant uh, to be a gift of God for men to have a time of rest and a time where we could uh, put aside all our earthly cares our, and our earthly work and have fellowship with God and with the people of God. And if you remember, it was actually spoken when Jesus was traveling through the green fields uh, with his disciples. Uh, but today, let's take a, a look at another record of the same incident. And that is in Matthew 12. In Matthew 12, verse 1, it says, At that time, Jesus went through the green fields on the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry, and began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath. Why is it not lawful on the Sabbath? You, what will you do when you are hungry? You eat, right? How do you feel when you are hungry? Uh, there is a saying, a hungry man is an angry man. But how do you feel that when you are hungry, you have food right in front of you? You feel very excited. In fact, the hungrier you are, the more attractive and enjoyable the food will be. And it was a Sabbath day. The Pharisees think that when you eat from the table, that is enjoying food, that is having a meal. But when you eat from the field, that is work. Now, they don't understand their own law. In Deuteronomy 23, verse 25, it says, As long as you use your hand and not a sickle, it's okay. As long as you do not put things in the bag, it's okay. If you use, use a sickle, it's work, harvesting. But if you use your hand to eat, that's eating food, that's having a meal. And you know something? To me, when they do this on the Sabbath day, they are exactly keeping the Sabbath. What do I mean by that? Did they plant the grain? No, they didn't. That wasn't their grain fields. So what did God promised His people about the promised land? What is the meaning of the Sabbath? In Deuteronomy 5, Moses, through the inspiration of God, gave them another reason for keeping the Sabbath. We always say, okay, when we keep the Sabbath, it's about remembering God's creation. But uh, that is in Exodus 20. But if you were to look at Exodus, uh, Deuteronomy 5, Moses says, why did God ask you to keep the Sabbath? First of all, before he even gave the Ten Commandments, he says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. And then when he says, you shall keep the Sabbath day, he says, remember you were slaves in Egypt and the Lord your God saved you out of Egypt and therefore he commands you to keep the Sabbath. So keeping the Sabbath is to remember about God's deliverance from slavery. The Jews during the time of Jesus, they forgot all about why they had to keep the Sabbath. In fact, they forgot all about why they had to keep the Passover. Why? Because Jesus says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And then the Jews were very angry. Why? What do you mean by you set us free? We are all children of Abraham. We have never been slaves before. They have forgotten why they keep the Passover. Passover is about being saved from Egypt. They forgot all about the Sabbath. The Sabbath is also being slay, uh, saved from slavery in Egypt. So Jesus reminded them, He who sins is a slave of sin. But when God saved the people of Israel out of Egypt, it was not just to leave them to find a place to stay. He saved them out, but He saved them into. He saved them out of slavery. He saved them into the Promised Land. What is Promised Land? 
you will say, oh, promised land means land flowing with milk and honey. That means a place of abundance. But actually, the promised land means more than that. Let's take a look at Joshua. Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24, just before the death of uh, Joshua, he mentioned about how God led them out of Egypt and into the promised land. And he says uh, that God, in verse 12, 24 verse 12, I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out before you, and also the two kings of the Amorites, but not with your sword and with your bow. That means to say God fought for them. You, went into, you go into the promised land, God actually chased out your enemies for you, and that happens in Jericho as well. And even the two kings of the Amorites. But very importantly, let's continue to read verse 13. I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you did not build, and you dwell in them, and you eat of the vineyards and olive groves which you did not plant. So, you don't have to build houses, you have houses to stay, free lodging. You don't have to build them, move in condition. And then you have free meals, you don't have to plant, and you can eat. And that's what the promised land is all about. It's not just about abundance. It's about rest. Because it says you don't have to plant, you don't have to build, means it's a land of rest. It is a land of rest, not just a land of abundance. And so, back to the time in Matthew 12, they were actually doing what they were supposed to do on the Sabbath. They were eating what they did not plant. That's enjoying the Sabbath. But if you were to look at Matthew 12, it follows from Matthew 11. And in Matthew 11, in verse 28 and 29, Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. 2030. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. After saying this, the Bible records about him traveling through the green fields on the Sabbath day. He says, I will give you rest. Come to me, I will give you rest. And then the story of the Sabbath day comes. And what is the conclusion? The conclusion is chapter 12, verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. We have read this before. Now we should have some thinking about what it means. For the Son of Man, Jesus, is Lord even of the Sabbath. This is actually connected to what he said in chapter 11. Come to me, I give you rest. Come to me, I give you rest. So I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Now you go back to the time of Exodus. What kind of rest? You have houses to live which you did not build. You have food to eat that you did not plant. So today, we as Christians, we must understand this, that Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath and He is going to bring us into the eternal promised land where we have everlasting fellowship with Him, a land of rest. Not just a land of abundance, but a land of rest. And therefore, in Hebrews, it tells us, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4 says, verse 3, For we who have believed do enter that rest. He has said, I saw in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he has spoken of a certain place of the seventh day in this way, and God rested the seventh day from all his works. And again, they shall not enter my rest. So, brothers and sisters, God gives us a land of rest. But then He tells us about certain people that He's very angry with and He says, I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Are we the people who will enter or are we the people who will not enter? So let's think back about again the story of the Exodus. The people who did not enter the land of rest 
were the people who died in the wilderness. And therefore, here he says, again, Hebrews 4, verse 6 and 7. Since therefore it remains that some must enter it, and those to whom it was preached did not enter it because of disobedience. And again, he designates a certain day saying, In David, today, after such a long time, as it has been said, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then he would not afterwards have spoken of another day. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Let's go to verse 11. He says, Let us therefore be diligent to enter into the rest, lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Today, if you hear my voice. Have you heard his voice? What does the voice say? The voice say, Come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Today, when you hear the voice, it is the voice of Jesus saying, Come to me, and I will give you rest. So every Sabbath, remember that. Come to Jesus. Put aside all your sin. Put aside everything. Come to Jesus, and he will give you rest.